8 minutes to 11. We will be observing the two-minute silence at 11 o'clock this morning. Now, if you've been to Coventry's Herbert Art Gallery in recent weeks, you might have seen some of their street art season. Today, an event there is asking if graffiti can really change the world. Coventry City Council have told us they spend £63,000 a year removing graffiti, so we thought we'd ask, where where is the line drawn, so to speak, between graffiti and street art? Photographer and filmmaker Henry Chalfont and graffiti artist Mohammed Ali are involved with the event today. They both join me in the studio. Um, where where do you draw the line, if you excuse the, the poor pun, between street art and graffiti? Well, you just mentioned um, a large figure... To remove it. Mm. I would hope that people wouldn't spend money removing beautiful murals. But a lot of people will argue that some graffiti are in no way, shape or form beautiful murals. They're just a blot on the landscape. Well, then maybe they should, maybe they should try to clean those up. But what happens is, is that, uh, as it happened in New York when, they, when the train phenomenon was happening, mm-hmm. the, the city spent millions of dollars trying to erase the murals on the side of the trains. Mm-hmm instead of going after the inside. So they were engaged in a kind of ideological war. They were saying, let's destroy the beautiful things and then people will get disappointed and they won't do it anymore. But what, what is the difference, though, between graffiti and street art? Where does... Uh, I was saying to you, actually, when, when you just came in, I went for a run the other week and I was going along Canal Side and on one of the bridges at the side, somebody had, had painted on the brick and it was actually fantastic it made me smile it was beautifully executed there was real thought behind it and as i went into the tunnel it was just daubed with stuff and i just thought oh that looks awful so where, mm-hmm. where do you draw the line um well i think you know there's an aesthetic component to mm. to graffiti as it evolves there's tagging mm. and then you you, be, you get graffiti murals uh you get calligraphy in terms of wild style and beautiful ways mm. forms of writing and then street art which is a kind of continuation of this and it it has a, a different history too but um there's an aesthetic and there's a cultural and political message sometimes component to that sure. Muhammad Ali you're you're a graffiti artist so um many people will still see graffiti mm. uh, as an eyesore uh, some sure. will even see it as an act of vandalism. Um, how do you see graffiti? Well, I think it's important, just echoing what Henry just mentioned, really, that it's important not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm. Graffiti art is an amazing kind of movement that so many decades onwards has influenced pe- people's lives across the globe. It really is an amazing way to kind of enhance our ugly grey environments, the concrete jungles we live in. Um, and some choose to do so with, with that permission and illegally and mm-hmm. vandalising property. And, often and actually, not very well executed yeah, ex- either exactly, exactly. <laughs> in some cases. You know, we will see ug- ugly kind of uh, expressions upon beautiful buildings often, and that's hurtful, of course, mm. no doubt. But also, it's important to remember that we have an amazing kind of colourful expression that can enhance our environment and actually bring colour to our daily lives and, and something which we need in the, in the society in the world we live in today we certainly need to enhance our daily lives with something which has color to it and it, and and with the murals that i do mm. i always say color but also a bit of meaning as well bringing some meaning to our lives that i totally get and and, and i say my bridge is my is my example it was graffiti but mm. it was art and it was it made me smile it, it was giving a message i think it had a bird on it sort of tweeting and it and it was great and it fitted rather well i thought in the environment the the daubing um, uh, on the inside of the tunnel just looked like somebody got hold of a spray can and just sort of gone, you know, and tried to do something but in no way achieved the end that the person who'd done the other graffiti had. We asked Coventry City Council how much they spent on removing graffiti. They told us it was £63,000 and you were citing Henry New York. Is that money not well spent? Well, I think, no, I think in New York, I can't really comment on the Coventry situation. In New York, they, they wasted money, in my opinion, mm. trying to clean the outsides of the trains because they were... And they also damaged the environment while they did it. They dumped into the sewage system God knows how many millions of gallons of, mm. of really toxic materials in this quixotic effort to get rid of, the, get rid of graffiti. Mm. Um, I prefer people's... You know, when the authorities... And they will, and, and with good reason, they will attempt to channel it they will try to reach an agreement, say, well, you paint here, don't paint here, yeah. which sometimes is successful and sometimes not. But I think in all ways, 
creation of a conversation and, the, and a dialogue between authorities and children is far better than draconian measures, say, calling it a mm. felony and throwing people in jail. What did they jail. do uh, eventually then in New York? Well, eventually they got a they got a fleet. They had the money to to buy um, an entire fleet, which was big enough so that they could take the train out of service when it was written upon and clean it, rather than letting it run. And once you do that, you take away a lot of the incentive because mm. you don't. If you don't get to see your work, and if yeah. three and a half million people a day don't get to see your work, no you point. lose you lose the motive. No point. Yeah. What <laughs> motivates you then, Mohammed, to 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 do your work? I mean, to be sitting here. Um, alongside Henry Shelf, and it really is a great honor. I'm not sure if your listeners are aware, but this really was the man that I would say, uh, through his efforts in the 70s and 80s in New York, photo documenting this amazing graffiti movement mm. that came from the streets of New York. It was through his book, Subway Art, that literally changed, changed my life, you know, mm. and it's so many decades onwards, it's graffiti has become a, a part, of, p- part of my life in a massive way, in how I've the beauty of transforming the public space with color um, and as I mentioned earlier with something of meaning as well for me the public space is something that belongs to the public so what I paint on the walls and when I've traveled from city to city I like to explore and kind of understand the issues that affect the very communities that I visit so the murals belong to the public so these messages need to speak to those people so I kind of use these walls as a means to communicate um, in the times that we live in where we see important values, uh, kind of virtuous kind of principles of, of peace and justice, freedom, sadly fading away. You know, young people today, this doesn't even exist in their vocabulary, these kind of values that are fading away from modern society. I try to kind of inject some of that back by almost providing, I would describe my murals as an alternative billboard. Should we then just provide more public spaces where people can express themselves artistically and say, well, look, you know, here is a wall, here is the side of a building. Um, uh, do what, with it what you will, express yourself. That's not a bad idea. You know, I really think, you know, listening, listening to Muhammad Ali speaking, I realize that there's this incredible outpouring of expression and mm. talent that we have now that we didn't have before graffiti mm. came into the scene. You know, and so many people have actually, through the apprenticeship of, of painting walls illegally and trains illegally, have mm. found careers for themselves. And clearly, I, mean, I think there's a, there's a circumstance where a building um, in, in Brighton or somewhere where Banksy put a, a mural on the outside and I think the value of the building went up by 150,000. So, you know, there, there, there is that aspect of it as well. So what are you hoping to achieve now in the future? Well, I hope to continue painting the world, really, uh, you know, just traveling around and engaging. And, you know, we hear about so many city authorities, different initiatives and politicians coming up with different initiatives to tackle the world's problems, whether it's racism or, you know, trying to com- you know, com- buzzwords like community cohesion and all this kind of stuff, you know, problems that exist amongst youth. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think the answers are very simple, you know, we, we all this money has been kind of spent on all these different initiatives. The arts is an amazing way to kind of engage and connect people, a universal language in the public space. This is something that we need to kind of recognise and harness. It's interesting, isn't it, that we'll have programmes where historians go back over over centuries who will marvel at wonderful cave drawings and so on, but presumably in their own form they were their their own street art and their own graffiti. Yeah, That's true. Well, well, this this is what we'll be speaking about today, in fact, about how... You know, graffiti has been way, way before the spray can. <laughs> and in fact, every single Way one before the spray can, yeah. I like the phrase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, the spray can, the invention of the spray can makes it more permanent. That's mm. why we're more aware of it, too. Because yeah. a lot of, I mean, New York was covered with graffiti before the spray can, but it was chalk and crayon. Yeah. So one town pool like today and it was gone yeah. oh maybe that's a whole new debate I don't know about renewing art mm. I, don't, I don't know <laughs> but thanks very much indeed if you'd like to go along uh, to that talk it's on today at uh, the Herbert can graffiti art really change the world thank you both very much indeed Mohammed and Henry for joining us thank you thank you, thank you. you make me want to say